It is time to feed the addiction, everyone. No, not that one. Although I could always make some time for some slots, if you know what I mean. I'm more here to tell you all about coffee, folks. The best beverage in all of Don't Starve history. Now, I might hate the stuff in real life, but you better bet on me chugging the stuff out there on the high seas. The drink in and of itself, though, is pretty straightforward, mind you. It's its plant that is far from it. So then, let's go get caffeinated. But were it so easy? For you see, coffee plants are solely found in the big old pile of molten rock known as the volcano. So we have got plenty of sailing to do to even have a chance at coffee, potentially. That said, I will offer some tips on the volcano front here. Like how the volcano is usually, not always, but usually settled in one of the four corners of your shipwrecked world. Now, that doesn't really mean all that much, unfortunately, as there's still going to be a lot of water to cover between you and it, and the volcano can be a pretty sneaky bugger for sure. But I do have a solution for that even. Rainbow jellyfish, everyone. In short, every new moon, besides the one on day one, mind you, sees a huge number of jellyfish spawn beneath the volcano. And after a while, they will begin to migrate towards the center of the world. Well, more or less. So then, if you happen to see an unusual number of shiny jellies all swimming in one direction, I highly recommend sailing in the exact opposite direction. Because doing so could very likely lead you to the volcano, and of course, our ultimate prize here today. So good luck. But yeah, get prepared for some jankiness, as coffee plants... Well, it's actually mostly shipwrecked, but coffee plants are a fickle bunch, let me tell ya. Sometimes they cooperate and work absolutely fine, while other times they seem to have a mind of their own. So understand that what I'm going to help you understand might not actually apply to you when it comes to these things. However, I will still attempt to give you the would-be basics. Like how entering the volcano biome, in most seasons outside of dry, we'll see most plants withered as you can see. And they will be staying this way up until the world begins to heat up closer and closer to the dry season, and eventually they will literally grow themselves pretty much. Some will not though, and many seem to switch back and forth at times given temperature and harvest variations, but again, Coffee plants here in the volcano will typically fertilize themselves come dry season. That's the gist. I'll tell you what though, you might actually get lucky with an early volcano and some nearby plants when you first enter the joint, although I wouldn't really count on it. Because not only will you get but one harvest in, most plants are just going to be withering right in front of you anyways. So then, the question must be this. How do we go about harvesting coffee plants when we want to without waiting for the dang game? Well, with ashes, everyone. Ashes fertilize coffee plants for us, and we can either chop down the trees here on top of the volcano for one, or just simply turn a stack of whatever we wish to into them for our pleasures, of course. And only then should we even think about shoveling these plants up. And why is that, you ask? Well, because like most other withered plants in the Don't Starve universe, digging up withered coffee leads to twigs, not the plant itself. Not good, obviously. But leave these plants in the ground, and their initial growth time is usually between four to five days, perhaps even a teensy tiny bit less in certain situations. But make note here. Rain will not speed that process up like it does with other plants in this game. No, no, no. Coffee plants love heat. But pick a fertilized plant, and the time between regrowth and harvesting is less than the roughly two days, so that's pretty nice. Now typically, a wild coffee plant, aka one that has not been transplanted by us, should give but one harvest per fertilization outside of dry season. But I'm pretty sure that has changed. Or this is just one of those janky things about these plants that I just haven't kept up with because I don't play shipwrecked all that often, mind you. However, I can confirm that I returned to these plants five separate times and it worked just fine. 
Shipwrecked is still just kind of broken nowadays, so take what I say with a grain of salt. But when returning to transplanted plants, however, it is not going to be the same case. In fact, the most amount of harvest a player planted one can offer is but five before needing more ashes for more fertilization. And it's going to vary per plant, of course. Oh, and if you don't have any fancy smancy mods to tell you any of that, the plants themselves will actually visually lose berries per harvest over time, so there you go. Oh, but here's another thing to add to the jank list, I think. Once a plant has depleted its harvest, it typically needs four to five ashes itself to return to normally. However, sometimes the plant just don't even accept more than one, or don't even accept any at all occasionally, and you kind of have to log in and log out to fix that. Also, I still hear reports to this day about how transplanted plants sometimes need fertilization after every single harvest outside of dry season, or maybe even within dry season still, so I don't know, folks. But I do know that it will only be the wild plants that have not been shoveled up growing themselves in dry season, mind you. It's why some people either base in the volcano or just leave their plants in the volcano. But Beard, I can't plant my own plants anywhere outside of the volcano. So what gives? Well, it's likely due to the fact that coffee plants can be only planted on magma, ashy, and volcano turfs. Now, the former can be found in magma biomes on several islands in the overworld, mind you, while the latter two are found in the volcano itself. So make note there. Get them, and then get the plantain. And interestingly enough, these plants are 110% immune to fire, folks, which also extends to lightning, mind you. So that could be pretty neat when it comes to base building. And while there's some more jank with actually planting these things and then like popping in like they're fertilized, but they're not really fertilized, why do we actually care about coffee anyway, Beard? Well, you shouldn't really care about unroasted coffee, actually, so don't even bother. Instead, be sure to roast these beans to unlock their potential, folks. Even alone, a roasted bean will offer an 83% boost to our movement speeds, which is absolutely incredible. But toss four together within a crock pot, or perhaps even substitute one of the beans for honey to create coffee here. A drink that will barely heal us, barely fill us up, and even damage our sanities. But it's a drink that will offer this very same 83% speed boost for four frickin' minutes instead. And yes, it not only works while we are on any type of boat, it stacks with all other speed boosts in this game, folks. It's insane. So much so, that I don't even need to explain much further, I think. But I will leave you with two last notes here. While coffee plants are 110% a shipwrecked only thing, coffee beans can actually be bought at the Curly Tails Mud Spa within Hamlet. So there's that. Plus, simply connecting your shipwrecked world to Hamlet and vice versa via a Skyworthy or something can just get the job done for you too, as you can bring the plants over to Hamlet. But lastly, sorry Wigfred players, cause even after all these years, she still cannot partake. But there you have it everyone, a janky guide for a janky plant. Now I know I made a pretty big deal about that, but for the most part, you and these plants should work together just fine. So find that volcano and get the chugging caffeine everyone. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Zoom, zoom. And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.